Welcome to Masters of Self University Podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, CEO of Masters of Self University. Welcome to the Masters of Self University podcast. I have a very special guest with me today. He is my soul brother from the land down under, and he is a co-host, the co-host to Real Men, Real Talk Live, Mr. Evis Love. Welcome, Evis. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sister, for having me. I'm, I'm feeling so humbled and honored to be on the program and feeling a little bit uh, light without the brothers beside me on a podcast. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You'll have to tell them how this one goes. You don't have them by your side today. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So, but all is leading into surrender and trust. So I know this is going to be a very special obviously presentation of of a very special gift that you're offering to the world right now. Uh, I'm so excited to dive into this. And I am also a little um, nervous to dive into this, that I'll be able to even talk about this story, everybody. So let me tell you what this, um, what our episode is about today. Mason's Way, the story behind the book. So as some of you already know, and if some of you don't know, I'm going to tell you now, I have recently released um, my published book called Mason's Way, the 20 Universal Ways of Oneness Taught by the Spirit of an Enlightened Dog. And my book, I will hold it up for those of you who are here seeing it. If you're an audio only, sorry, you're missing out on seeing the book. (laughs) But this is my baby right here. We're going to talk about... um, who Mason was, how this book came about, and Evis here, who is just an angel, is um, somebody that has been working with me on some of the marketing aspects of releasing this book, and he is somebody I've I've been honored to be um, a guest host on Real Men Real Talk Live on a couple of occasions with Evis and his other soul brothers. And as Evis and I got to know each other, um, you know, he just started to become, to shift into oneness with me regarding the teachings of this book. And that's kind of why we're here today, what we want to talk about and talk about how this book even came about. So where do you want to go with this, Evis? What should we talk about first? Damn, it's going to be a deep conversation, sister. There's so, so many levels. And look, to be honest, guys, I haven't even read the book. But it feels like it's been a part of my life these last couple of weeks. I've just embodied it. I've been able to integrate it in some of these ways from the knowledge that I have from it so far. And I think it's so, so important that we learn from this book uh, about what really Rachel is trying to share here. And what obviously her beloved dog, Mason, was trying to share on this pathway to oneness from these 20 universal ways. Now... For me, I'll I'll just give you a quick back uh, story on my uh, relation, uh, obviously, with Rachel. And it's funny because she did mention uh, she's been on the podcast with that Real Men Real Talk live with the brothers a couple of times now. And uh, it happened to be just one day that we were in a, we were supposed to have a meeting, if you remember, Rachel. That's right. And those brothers didn't didn't turn up. (laughs) That's right. And so that was Rachel and I having this big deep dive and she started telling me she's getting ready to launch a book. Well, that just opened up obviously a can of worms. And uh, from that point, I've been very honored to be a part of uh, helping her with the direction, uh, particularly within the marketing side of it, but also in being able to deliver the message, I think in a way that it could be just about anyone that could really embrace this book. It does not necessarily, Necessarily have to be someone that is fully aware and fully so-called woke out there to really jump onto these paths and start being able to integrate these ways of oneness to live your best 
possible version. So for me, this has been my journey. This has been forever my practice. And to me, when I do my mentoring side of my business, it really is what I try and share with my brothers and sisters to help them being able to embrace the best possible version of themselves, particularly in these times that we're in. Now, you guys that don't know me uh, personally, um, a, a little bit of a backstory on me and uh, I guess how I got to do this stuff online. And, um, you know, for many years, I was actually uh, a, a personal trainer face to face here in the land down under. And um, through that process on helping people with their transformation, Rachel, I really started to see a deeper level of what was going on with that connection I was able to create with those people not only individually, but as groups as well, which is important about your book. What I was started to really lean on was that when I was helping them on this transformation, I was helping them on different levels of their being. Now, mm -hmm. out there in the collective, it is a general look that personal trainers, they're personal, but it's on a physical level. Now, what I started to see from, obviously, in my teachings, my culture that I, I really pull from and embrace through my uh, teachings and the way that I share with people in mentoring is that I was helping them not only on the physical level, but I was also helping on the etheric, the astral level, and also on that soul divine level. Now, what I started to see in these people was not only that physical body changing, but it was a different person. They were yes. changing their mindset. They were changing their state of being. They were changing the people, the surroundings they were in. They were changing the environments all to facilitate this best possible version of themselves that I'm sure Rachel's going to dive in uh, deep about Mason's way. So what, what it's really done for me just in this interaction with Rachel is that on me on a personal level, has it also helped me individually know for, for, for sure what I'm here to do and bridging that gap, being able to help people bridge that message on obviously that 3D, 5D level, which I'm sure we could talk about as well. But also, like I said, to just keep life simple. Oh, the love that. The simplicity of life. Yes. So... This book for me has been on very many levels, Rachel. And look, I, I know today we're going to be deep diving on uh, how many levels that could be on. But I'm just really honoured, sister. I'm really honoured and uh, thankful for you for having me on this journey. Oh, my goodness. I am too. It, it's the honouring is mutual. I'm so grateful. Um, it's so interesting because Evis, when, when we were working together, um, and, you know, he first started to learn more about, well, tell me about your book that's being released. It just started with a casual conversation. And as we started to talk about what the book was, and of course, we start to talk about Mason and how the book came about. I mean, it just immediately triggers the Niagara Falls of tears. And um, as I cry, when I share some of the stories regarding Mason, you know, Evis just has this amazing presence. You know, one of the ways of oneness is, is the way of presence. Um, one of the ways of universal ways of oneness is the way of connection. And Evis really shows up as this person that you really just show up, Evis, as this person who can open his heart, connect directly to his heart space, and from your heart space, connect to the other person in front of you. And it just comes so naturally for you. I mean, you just are already that. You know, you really are that. And the way of presence that you offer is just such a divine, enlightened characteristic. And so as Evis and I were having these, you know, casual conversations, um, it really opened up into a much deeper soul dive into this stuff because, I'm, I mean, he demonstrates some of the ways just so naturally. You know, you really do, Evis. And I'm just sharing that because I want, you know, I want our listeners to hear that. You can feel the presence of somebody who really um, embodies some of or all of the ways of oneness. You can feel it. It is palpable. It is um, an energy is created of just safety, of stillness, you know, of non-judgment. And that's power. 
that's power because the ability to be in your power means the ability to be in a loving in loving presence while someone else is sharing whatever it is they're sharing exciting news fantastic news devastating news you know really sad news or whatever it might be and that emotion that comes with it sometimes is just really well embraced and that's part of what i share how to become these enlightened characteristics in this book that's part of it and i say very honestly to people it is not a marketing ploy when i say to you that these ways really truly were role model to me first by um my very very special dog who was no longer with me named mason i mean he really was the first one to be the spiritual teacher of these ways and allow me to shift fully into the, the universal ways of oneness so beautiful sister uh, it is and you know like as we navigate and explore some of these ways of oneness you really do touch on a really important one there with presence you know from our old stories here in the land down under as an original first nations person our elders always taught us to sit out in nature in this stillness and be present with her and so when you talk about that very way of oneness, it was one of our very key values that were anchored in our law. So when I talk about law in our culture, we call it L-O-R-E law. And it is basically the law of one of our first creation stories, which entitles all the universe, uh, obviously uh, what we're currently living in as well, but all of this story of oneness that you're talking about. And we were always shown as the, the poor eye, the young boy or the young girl, that if we could sit out there in that silence and be present with her, that you would pick up the knowledge, oh, that you yes. would pick up the wisdom yes. and that you are connected to everything, the birds, the animals, the rocks, the water, the air, the trees, that we are all one. So you had to show respect. Otherwise, there were obviously repercussions coming from a warning, then the punishment. Oh, nice. That's so beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful. I think, you know, you're a perfect example how there are still those teachings out in the world. But for the most part, we have lost that. And that's what we're trying to get back to. We're trying to get back to what does it mean to be in oneness? Because I think most people, we don't grow up with these teachings, generally speaking, you know, and it's amazing and how incredible that you're a person who actually grew up with some of these teachings still alive, you know, because I really think they've been lost, but they also, because they're not prevalent in the world it's time to bring them back it's time to bring back the universal truths of oneness what we are whether we understand it right now or not what that means we are in we are one and what that really means is we come from you know the universe the creator whatever you want to call it the light it doesn't matter source whatever you feel comfortable calling it is okay source doesn't care what you call it <laughs> you know so you can call it whatever you want but Whatever that is, we come from that consciousness. That consciousness creates, it takes parts of itself and separates it and creates something from itself. It isn't something outside of itself. It pulls from itself and it creates a planet, a universe, a galaxy, a star, a human, an animal, aspects of nature. It creates from itself more of itself into different forms. I mean, that's all we are, manifested forms of source itself so that we can experience and experience in this manifested form. That is it. That's what it means that we are one here to experience our differences, our uniqueness, so that we can express differences and uniqueness here as still one being. And yet we have lost that. We've lost that understanding that we are one in our differences. Despite our differences, we're still the same. And in our sameness, we are uniquely different. 
And they're supposed to be the beauty, the magic of that, the honoring of that while we're here experiencing differences in gender and color and culture and ethnicities and, you know, all of it in animals and nature and our oceanic brothers and sisters. Like we're still one, even though we're different. And I think the beauty of that is when these teachings came to me, I've mentioned they first came through my dog, Mason, because he role modeled every way of oneness. There are 20 universal ways of oneness. And he role modeled and lived every single one of them. And he showed me what it meant to be a role model and what it meant to be in equality. For example, that just because he's a dog does not mean he's inferior to me. You know, and we live in such extreme inequality on our planet and we limit ourselves to think it only means for example different colors of our skin or gender that's how we even define it and if that's the only two ways we define inequality we are nowhere near living at the level of equality that's not divine equality equality is just because you are a dog or a cat or a hummingbird or a tree you are not less than i and this is what, you know, this is why these teachings first came and were role modeled to me by, by what we call in manifested form a canine or a dog, because we have to learn that teachings don't come from just, you know, ma a man, a human. You know, it comes from all beings. Are you awakened enough to listen and learn and gain the wisdom from all beings? All beings are here to teach us. Beautiful, sister. Beautiful. Yeah, it, it's so true. And like I said in that creation story that I mentioned in our culture, it talks about that we're actually the youngest ones birthed. Yes. So our animals are actually our elders. Beautiful. So we know our ancestors are out there in nature and with these beautiful furry friends of ours, they're there teaching us these lessons just as much as we share you know what we feel that we know from an ego point of view and from a higher self point of view yeah so this beautiful way of equality that you're talking about like you said we are no less than we are no more than yes. but we have growing up in a society which has pinned us up here on the so-called totem pole yes. that's disconnected us not only from ourselves but from nature itself Exactly. So I feel what you're talking about, and I can't wait to hear when you talk about these ways of oneness. For me, Rachel, what is this way of oneness defined for someone that may have been disconnected for themselves in a very, very light manner without obviously uh, disturbing too much of the book? Yeah, that's, this is what's so interesting. It can be really challenging to describe what oneness is when we are so separate from it, when we're so separate from it. And I think to gain an understanding, a, a divine understanding or a deeper understanding of what oneness is, we first have to realize what oneness is not. And I think that's the easiest path and, and fastest track to take to, to actually learn what oneness is. So you learn what oneness is not. Oneness is not playing out um, the roles of superior and inferior ever. That no one is inferior to you and no one is superior to you. And gaining that little understanding when we play out roles of hate, of resentment, of anger, and we don't first go inside and heal those emotions that are okay that we feel those emotions are real inside of me right now that means i need to take that level of awareness and i need to go inside and i need to heal myself because when i heal myself in those moments of fear or anger or frustration or sadness or grief i then don't project that pain onto other humans if I don't project that onto other humans, pointing fingers, blaming, hating other people for what they've done or what they look like or who they are, then I am now starting to live 
in the ways of oneness because I'm not willing to harm other humans or beings any longer. I'm willing to take responsibility for myself, my emotions, my state of being. I take that's the first way of oneness is the way of responsibility. I take responsibility for my state of being, my energetic state, my emotional state, my mental state. When I'm doing that, that is the first step to understanding and comprehending what oneness means because I'm not willing anymore to just have knee jerk reactions or project my wounding, my woundedness onto other people. That is just the first way of oneness. So that I believe is a place where we start in understanding what oneness is, is I'm not willing to harm other people any longer because of how I show up in the world. You take that first step, you are on the path to learning the ways of oneness. Mm -hmm. and that's absolutely beautiful, sister. And, and those ways of oneness, would you say from Mason's way um, in your teachings and those universal ways uh, taught by the uh, Mason, that oneness will be a culmination of all of these ways. By the time someone gets to the end of that book, they're going to be able to inter integrate and embody this way of oneness? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. So each way of oneness of the 20, they lead you into the next way. So if you master and you really start to embody the way of responsibility, then you buy a byproduct of that organically, you automatically start to shift into the second way of oneness, which is the way of patience. For example, you master and start to get really at high level with the way of patience, you automatically start to gain the characteristic of the enlightened characteristic of the third way of oneness, which is the way of surrender. And it goes on and on. And it doesn't mean that these are fixed and strictly linear, but there is a linear aspect to the level of growth that each way builds upon the previous way. The, the 20th and final way of oneness is the way of harmony, for example. The way of harmony being the highest level, you pretty much embodied all of the previous ways. Right. So if you have all of the previous ways of oneness already and you really, truly attain and embody the way of harmony, the final way, that way of oneness at that point, you've become an enlightened being, a fully enlightened being. Now, you can start to gain certain aspects, certain ways of oneness and be be pretty, pretty evolved in a certain way of oneness and not in others. So it's not strictly linear. You know, some people have mastered ways of oneness in previous lifetimes, and they come into this lifetime already embodying the way of harmlessness and gentleness, for example. So a lot of people who are uh, fight for animal rights are people, just a simple example, that's a way what people came in already embodying that way because they're here to help bring that way to the planet. So... It's, it's not strictly linear, but yes, it's taught in a linear way because each way sort of is a little more powerful than the previous way. It's a little higher vibrational frequency than the previous way. And all of those ways to get together, you master all of those ways in this lifetime, you have become an enlightened being. Mm, so powerful, so powerful. And, and to think, you know, like when, when I had a look at those ways of oneness that you'd um, shared so beautifully, to me, so many of them are values that anyone could obviously embody within their life. Yes. And the current population society I think we're living in, even through some of the people that I mentor, when I talk to them about values, they're, they're like, what, Ev? what are you talking about? So many people, and I'm talking about grown adults, don't even have values in their life. And to me, like I said, I haven't read it, but I feel like I know it. Just looking at these ways of oneness, it it really are, they are values within your life to help you navigate back to this way of oneness that you're talking about. Because I feel up until this point in this paradigm, we've been so, so disconnected from this idea of oneness, this I am, and that we've been just living in constant I am not. Yes. Beautiful. So, it, it seems to me there's so many levels to these ways of oneness that you've delivered that could really empower anyone at this time that we're living in. Absolutely. 
It's, it is the path to, to end all suffering. And you can't end suffering out in, in the world without ending suffering within yourself. Because, because the micro creates the macro and out there, out there, the world out there, because oneness, it is a reflection of what we are in the inside. That's all it is. So when we say we don't like, you know, all oh, the injustices in the world and we don't like how unfair this is and we don't like that. Well, of course we shouldn't like it. We shouldn't tolerate it. None of it's okay. All the horrible things that happen in the world. And yet we are blind to how we are creating the macro. Well, I don't do that. Ah, guess what? I'm not a gambling woman, but I'll bet you do. And I'll bet you a really high amount of money that you do. And then I'll show you how you do it. And then I'm going to get a lot of money. <laughs> and the simple example of demonizing our own emotions, of making quote unquote, we call negative emotions. They're the bad ones. They're the dark ones, the negative ones. We don't like to feel those. Those are bad. So we avoid, we cope, we go into denial. We, um, we go to our addictions. We resort to our addictions. Why? So we don't have to feel our quote unquote negative emotions. Those are the bad emotions. All the garbage that is taught out there nowadays with positive vibes only means you're literally creating the energy of inequality, inequality within yourself. Cause you're making a lot of the half of the emotions that you feel you're making them wrong bad you're demonizing them like they shouldn't be here oh, you're telling me grief is not supposed to be here when someone dies someone you love that grief wasn't i felt like part of my soul died the day that mason died i felt like part of my soul died that grief was the most intense grief i have ever felt in this lifetime to date and all of the abuse I went through when I was young, none of it collectively touched or scratched the surface of what I felt the day that I had to say goodbye to my Mason. Don't you dare tell me positive vibes only on that day. There's no such thing. We are demonizing our humanness. Our humanness feels pain. And that is so that our soul can grow and expand. And so when we say things like, oh, I'm not sexist, I'm not racist. Ah, except you are to your own emotions when you can't even embrace the ugly ones, the dark ones. So we are that ignorant and that spiritually immature that we can't even see yet what we're creating out there in the horrible world of violence and inequality and all that, you know, ugly stuff. It, we have to stop and go in and see where I'm creating it within me. And let's just start with our emotions. If you're not loving your painful emotions, you 100% are creating separation programs on this planet. You just mm. don't see it. 100% sister. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, you talk about those so-called dark emotions. So, so important that we integrate that and, you think when if we haven't been living in this oneness that you're talking about through the book, that uh, we've been disconnected in some of those fragmented pieces, it's like now we have this opportunity with the current energy on the planet to bring back those pieces of ourselves. But it's like the bridge is really between the stories we've been telling ourselves, the yeah. programming, um, the belief systems, and all the other shit that's been yeah. and. and lodged into our personal being that's disconnected us from this way of oneness yeah i mean you know um it just, it just really amazes me the depth that you've gone in onto the book but sister i want to i want to know a little bit about mason i want to know about uh, this brother because when you were talking about mason i mean it really just struck a chord with me straight away and um it reminded me of uh, a relationship my um sister she actually used to have with one of the dogs that we had and it was called red Aww. dog Aww. and and it, and it was like a dog uh from her birth it was just by her side yeah it, it was it was never harmful it, it was you know just so stoic in nature and mm -hmm. it always looked after her but never with any sort of anger 
with any sort of, you know, uh, raise up temper that showed any, any of those signs, but more so just this beautiful, secure nature and protective nature that he'd had with her. What was Mason to you, my sister? Oh, my goodness. He was, I used to tell people when they say, see, is he a lab? What kind of lab? I'm like, he's an English, yeah, he's half English yellow lab, half angel incarnated. That's how I always described him, that he was half angel incarnated. He was my angel. He was harmlessness and gentleness. He was presence. He was divine connection. He was surrender and patience like I've never seen. I mean, he was just harmony. He just was enlightened, divine. He was what I imagine God to feel like when you're in source's presence. I mean, he was magical and his unconditional love, of course, unconditional love is one of the ways of oneness. And most people who are dog lovers know that unconditional love come. I mean, they dogs teach that to us as humans. And Mason had it to a level that is just undescribable. I mean, he, he was, I, he's my sole companion dog. He was my sole companion dog. He had a very special mission, a very divine mission with me. And, you know, he helped me to evolve into the spiritual leader that I am, the way that I teach and how I teach it. He helped me embody the ways. I mean, he was my, he saved my life. He saved my life. There is not a, a spiritual leader, a true spiritual leader on this planet that had an easy life. No such thing. There's no such thing. You have to go through massive tests of initiation. And that is that has nothing to do with the stupid goddamn law of attraction. Everybody needs to throw that crap in the trash. It, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but it's one piece to a thousand piece puzzle, my friends. So we need to let that go and stop thinking that everything you experience in life is only with this very strict, small, tiny, you know, definition of what the law of attraction is. You are going to go through tests of initiation as a human. And if you're here to be a spiritual teacher, a spiritual leader, to bring something like the ways of oneness to the world, you are not going to have an easy path. And it's not going to be, uh, you know, for a month or two. It's going to last the majority of your life for however long that's going to last. It's years, it's decades. And so I can tell you that with the tests of initiation that I had to go through to be the, the channel that I am, to be the messenger that I am, doesn't come from Rachel. None of this comes from Rachel, I promise. Um, I would never claim it to be, there's no way. Um, but to be that messenger and to go through those tests, Mason was by my side. And I can tell you, if he was not by my side, I wouldn't be here. He saved my life over and over again. He taught me the level of pain that you can endure and move through and embrace and learn to love instead of resist that you can what it means to become a spiritual warrior and that's not just a meme you put on social media because you'll gain a couple more followers because it's catchy like there is a really treacherous path that you go through to become a spiritual warrior and he was by my side in oneness every step of the way. I had to go through a journey completely alone. Completely alone. Where I had no one's love or support, not one person. And where the only interaction you would have is projection, resistance, attack. And yet, I always had him. He just, he loved me in a way that I don't think humans are yet capable of. And he just had this sweet, innocent presence. I'm right here. You're going to be okay. Feel your pain. You got this. You got it. Learn what you need to learn. And just keep going and become the warrior. And that's what he helped me to do. 
words cannot honor him enough. The gifts I gained from him are priceless and my soul is forever expanded because of him. There is never enough gratitude in the whole universe to offer him for what he has given to me. And it wasn't just for me, it was so that I could turn around in selfless service, another way of oneness, and gift that to all of humanity. And that's how special and precious he was. Absolutely beautiful, sister. Thank you for sharing. It's just such a beautiful connection you had with the brother and, um, you know, for, for, for people that are out there that may not uh, be dog owners or have had a pet within their, ever in their lives, I think what we've got to understand and understand here is just the deep connection to anything. But for Rachel just to have such a beautiful, intimate connection and to realise through this self-actualization in these um, ways of oneness that Mason was teaching her, not only along the journey, but even when the brother made the transition and shifted oh. into the other dimension, the connection is never lost. No. These connections are never lost. And it's beautiful when you share these beautiful tears of sadness and joy I can see them just interlaced into this unconditional love like you mentioned. But it, it, it just felt in that moment that you were sharing that beautiful vulnerability that he was also teaching you that you're never alone. Yeah, exactly. That your self-love, you were bringing, he was bringing you home. So it's just a, it's a fascinating story. And it's, it's when you talk about this deep connection, uh, obviously through a little bit of the research I was uh, doing initially with these connections with pet owners, you know, the, the biggest fear that I came across was obviously the fear of losing them. Yeah. Ooh. And uh, I guess when we talk about the fear of loss in anything, mm -hmm. what is a way of oneness that you could really share with us that you've learnt through loss, through this grief? Because I feel, you know, like there's no rush with grief. I, oh. I, I, the more I learn about it and I embody it, it's just such a, another beautiful way that we as human beings get to integrate this so-called dark and this so-called light. So, so what are maybe, there's probably even a couple of ways in there, but what are, what is a way of oneness within the book, Rachel, that could really help with the, uh, the, the, the loss of something in grief? Yeah, there are several, but the first one that comes to me is the way of surrender. I mean, Mason really took me to the depths of of the way of surrender and um and the way of honoring um and and what i mean by that is when he was when i knew it was time okay mason um took him to the vet he was sick he had a mass in his stomach we, you know he had cancer and I kept getting the message really that I, I could heal, that I could heal it, that he could heal from this and he would have more time. And then there was a day where he was old, you know, he was really old and his eyesight was going and he didn't, he couldn't be very far from me at all, or he would get really stressed out. He became very dependent upon me. And that's, you know, he was elderly. He was having a hard time. So of course, he was dependent upon me at that point for his well-being. He would get very stressed out if he wasn't by my side at all times at this phase of his life, the end of his life. And it shifted. It really shifted when during COVID, they they wouldn't let myself and my partner, Chris, they wouldn't let us in 
for the day to run all of the tests. And he had that loss of connection with me. And it was that moment that he, he gave up. He couldn't do it anymore. And I felt him say, if this is how I have to live my life and go to be treated like this and not have you by my side, his soul made the decision he was done. And two days later, I had someone come and put him to sleep. He went downhill so fast and I didn't want him to suffer. So I didn't resist even a crumb. It was the way of surrender that he tested me. Could I really be in the way of surrender with this? The grief is intense. It is agonizing, but it's worse. And it's worse for your beloved animal when you're resisting the truth, the reality of what's really happening. We all die. Our consciousness lives forever. We are infinite beings, but our human selves or our canine selves, our manifested physical bodies die. And we have to say goodbye to that part. And when he was dying, whew, I've never felt pain and grief like that ever, like I've mentioned, but I also was in zero resistance. I was so fully present. So the way of presence, the way of surrender, and the way of honoring him. I had a whole day. I had 24 hours when I made the decision and I saw he had made the decision to leave. I had 24 hours to be with him. Chris and I had 24 hours to say goodbye. Oh, why would I be in resistance to that? I got to hold him. I got to love him. I got to be glued to his side that whole last day. And I didn't make it about me because that's selfish. I made it about him. It didn't matter how much pain I was in. It only mattered that he felt my connection and my love for him, my unconditional love, the way of connection, the way of selfless service to wait on him hand and foot every second. All of those ways of oneness, I got to be those for him. In that last 24 hours, the way he had been for me for over 14 years. So, it was the most precious gift I ever could have been given. And it was the most painful gift. <laughs> but the most painful are usually the most priceless gifts that we're given as humans. Thank you, sister. So honored for you to share that. Thank you for sharing. I actually had no idea that it was uh, not long ago. And, um, you know, you think of the time that you're talking about with so much else, with all the distractions that were happening, we were really tested in many ways. And you talk about those spiritual mentors and teachers as yourself. Uh, we, we do really have to go through a lot of these trials, these initiations. And although that brother isn't with us at the moment, I, I can now see the initiation that he was a part of for that beautiful connection that you guys had. Yeah. It's, it's just an absolute beautiful story. And um, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I guess with any grief, like I mentioned, there's, there's no, time, no time limit to be able to grieve something. And this beautiful book, would, would you agree, is really your gift being able to share and process the grief of your life, obviously, with that connection? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 
I was obviously, <laughs> I'm still crying about it when I talk about my beloved Mason, but um, I was crying. And the very next morning, I had the vet scheduled to come at, at 3 p.m. on Thursday on April 29th and in 2021 and um she came and it was around a half hour maybe 40 minute process total and the very next morning when i got out of bed my eyes are swollen shut i'm a mess my half of my face was swollen from how hard i had been crying i looked like i had been on drugs had a really bad drug trip <laughs> you know my eyes are red bloodshot blood vessels are like breaking and my eyes i look like a zombie i look pretty scary <laughs> And I'm still crying and I, you know, I have a cup of coffee and I don't know if I can eat and I'm just on the couch, just processing and crying. And I got the, I got the message, you know, go get your laptop. And I was like, what, you know, I'm a channel. I mean, this is how it works for me. Do this, do that. And I listened and I'm the vessel for it. I was like, what, go get your laptop. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me right now. <laughs> You have got, and I had a moment of a split second where I almost went into resistance <laughs> because I'm in, I'm grieving and I'm nurturing myself through my grief. And I also had a second, a, just a flash of, I'm not capable of doing whatever you want me to do right now. I'm not strong enough. Like I feel broken and shattered. And, and then it was a stronger, go get your laptop. And I just breathed and I dropped into my heart and I went in flow with the universe and I grabbed my laptop and I sat down with it. And a flood came through of, do you realize now what his life and death really meant? What he was here to really show you. And then I just started channeling this book Mason's way, the 20 universal ways of oneness taught by the spirit of an enlightened dog. And it just came through one letter, one word, one sentence, one paragraph at a time. And each way of oneness just started to flow through. And it said, do you see now? Do you see? This is what it was all for. Do you see? And I just sat and I, and I wrote that book. And that's how the universal ways of oneness were received and given to me and then birthed in the form of a text that everybody else can now learn from. Wow, man. Oh, sister. Damn. Look, if you're out there listening to this, brothers and sisters, you don't even need to be on this spiritual journey to understand how beautiful this story is and connection that Rachel has been able to obviously connect with Mason not only Mason, but divine source, and most importantly, this deeper connection with herself. It's just absolutely beautiful. You know, like you're talking about that connection and how you just get into that flow to start channeling some of these teachings. I want to just uh, pivot on a little bit of a side angle here because when we first started talking about this, I knew, I knew Rachel Fiore was up to something, man. I thought, <laughs> Why is she launching this on the Lions Gate? Oh, eight, yeah. eight, save the date, Lions Gate. I knew in the back of my mind, sister, why she was doing it. But I want you to share. <laughs> she want you to share with our listeners or our viewers out there why, why you launched it on this special portal, on this special gateway. Oh, the, the, the energetic power of it. I'm actually going to invite you because Evis is really beautiful at teaching what Lionsgate is and serious. I would love for you to share with those who are unfamiliar with that. Share that first because when you I, knew uh, all of this, <laughs> when you knew all of this, and you were like, wait a minute, I'm like, oh, you know, like you understand. <laughs> so can you come, share? Come on, sister away first. Sister away <laughs> first. I'm really interested in, in why AA popped up for you initially, and then I'll do a bit of a deep dive. Sure. Sure, sure. So first, I have to say that my my number that represents me in this lifetime is eight. That's my number. It was it was my, you know, my soccer number when I was little and when I played college soccer for like I was number eight and my everything is eight. So 
that that number is my number energetically. And so when all of this lined up, um, there was an opportunity to be published by someone else previously. And um, it just felt really wrong that they were not it. They were not in alignment. They were not in integrity. And it's one of the ways one. So I couldn't be, I, I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And, but what happened was I started to get pushed by the universe. Like, no, but you, you got to do it now. This has to get out now. This has to get out now. And when I took that opportunity, a couple others that started to come up, they were for sim just to simplify and be quick with the story, missed opportunity, so to speak. But the universe was like, go, you got to go now. You got to go now. And it was such a powerful energy of get it out now, find another way. It has to go now. I didn't even realize at the time, all these things started lining, started aligning with me to get this published right now. Go, 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 go. It's an emergency. It has to go now. I didn't even originally plan for Lionsgate at all. I just was following the universe to go, 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 go. You got to get it out now. They need this now. The world needs it now. And then as that lined up, I'm like, well, you know, my publisher's like, well, you know, pick a date. And I'm like, well, let's do eight, eight. And at first I didn't realize it was Lionsgate. It was just, well, that's my number. It's eight, eight. That's my number. That is the most beautiful day to do this. I didn't even realize it was Lionsgate at first. Stop it. Wow. Never, didn't even realize it. Wow, there you go. Yeah. So, so it was intu intuition. You know, obviously, we're driving the vehicle. Yeah. And you know, you talk about that eight. When I see that eight, I think of infinite possibilities. Yeah. I, I think of uh, eternal uh, love. I think of that uh, balance of masculine, feminine energy. Yes. There's so much that interacts with that eight uh, as a as a spiritual number as well. But, you know, when we talk about this eight, eight lines gate, uh, a, a very important, and I feel each year uh, lineup that happens with our star Sirius yes. is that it really aligns with our sun. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to go on a little bit of it, just a little bit of a deep dive here, sister. Please go right ahead. Let, let's have a little bit of a quick foundation of, of what this whole idea that Rachel's talking about these ways of oneness you know, going into this new age or golden age of enlightenment. Now, for many, many ancient cultures, they always knew of this great year or this processional year. And this great year was basically a year that was broken up into cycles. And cycles as human beings where we go in and out of these dark ages slowly progress on our consciousness and we come into an age of enlightenment. From this point, they speak of basically a very special star within those uh, connections, which is the star Sirius, as I've mentioned. For many teachings, and it will teach you that it is the star behind our sun. Now, I want you to really have a listen to what's going on here, my brothers and sisters, because during this gateway with our sun, the star Sirius and the earth as it aligns, we are absolutely flooded with beautiful energies to allow us to really elevate these states of consciousness, to allow us to get closer to these ways of oneness and this, you know, enlightenment that Rachel's talking about. Now, is it coincidence to me that our brother that made the transition was my son, my son, my, my son, my son, my son. The star Sirius in all ancient traditions has been known as the dog star. Now, the dog star has been known because of that in these traditions. They talk about it has been the star that helps or follows in the footsteps of these other particular stars that have played prominent roles within the consciousness of our human being societies. So when I started to digest what, why she's opened up this portal and you know what it's got to uh, relevance with this, I'm starting to see that yeah, 
we are really getting an opportunity to heal, heal, H-double-E-L, H-E-A-L, our life. Yes. When I think of that command, heal, it literally means to sit side by side. So my question is to our brothers and sisters out there watching or listening, is it time to come home to your side? Are you listening to what Rachel's talking about with these ways of oneness that she's just happened to launch them through this beautiful Lionsgate portal that has a connection with our star, the sun, and this star that we know as Sirius, which is the spiritual star that sits in behind our sun? No, my brothers and sisters, this is mm -hmm. no coincidence. This is life by design. And these beautiful teachings, I think, you know, after we all get a chance to read on a deeper level, are really going to shift our awareness and how we can really, give, like I said, shift into that best possible version of ourselves. Absolutely. It's beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, uh, look, when you talked about the 8-8 lines, Gaiden, so obviously now if you just show us what's about to launch, if you show yeah. us what, what, what's in your hands at the moment. Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the paperback version. <laughs> which just happens to launch on when? August 26th, International Dogs Day. August come 26th, on. International Dogs Day. <laughs> come on, brothers and sisters. Is there something going on with the dog star and yeah. my son? Oh. Hey, see, the, see how the dance happens in the third dimension in physical reality? Absolutely. So it's this beautiful dance that we can all really get an opportunity to embrace and to integrate and really have a, a bit of playtime down here on this planet. Yeah. And to realize that everything truly is divinely guided, always just open up, become the waves, and you won't block it. Just open up, become the waves. So thank you, um, Evis. You are just, I mean, you're a soul brother to me. I appreciate you so much. I honor you. You're amazing and wonderful. Thank you so much for helping me through this. Talk about the way of connection, you know, the way that that Evis and I came into each other's lives, of course, all just divinely created and divinely aligned, you know, and as he mentioned, it was just by chance that none of the other guys showed up. We're calling them out now. <laughs> just the universe made sure they didn't show up. And then it was just us. Well, we're waiting for them. So we're just like chatting and hanging out. And then it led to us partnering with this. And I mean, to even have somebody that understands Lionsgate and Sirius and what all of these connections even mean. I mean, what a blessing you were given to me at the most perfect divine timing. So thank you for being on this journey with me. I appreciate no, it so much. Thank you so, so much, sister. Like I said, I'm very honored, very humbled to be a part of this journey with you. And I'm really looking forward to uh, deep diving in Mason on the paperback edition when that launches on 26th as well. For our viewers, our listeners out there, my sister, where, where can they get a copy of Mason's Way? Yeah, uh, you can go to rachelfiori.com. You can go to rachelfiori.com. Um, you can grab your ebook version if you want that one, or you can grab that paperback. So I love to have a book in my hands. I love to read. I love to hold the book. That's just me. I can't do the, the ebook things, the digital stuff I'm not into, but this, oh, I love this. So grab that paperback version if you if you really are like me and you want to grab that book and hold it in your hands. I'm hearing it, sister. I'm serious. Sir. And so for, 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 for as uh, Rachel's saying, you know, like you don't necessarily have to be specifically someone on the spiritual path and awareness no. path. You could be simply a pet lover. You could be simply someone that wants to get a little bit more connected with your own life. Um, I, I really feel, you know, once you connect with these ways of oneness, that it is really going to be able to, you know, integrate that best possible version of yourself. So we can just be living a more fulfilled life of peace, harmony, joy, and happiness. Absolutely. And as Eva said, for all of you dog lovers out there, Mason's story is throughout this entire book. 
So he is throughout this entire book. You'll be able to read about him throughout the entire book along with the ways of oneness. So it really is for, you know, as Eva said, it's for everyone if you're curious. So grab a copy and and uh, share with me what it meant for you. I would love that. I would love to. I'll set things up in the future, but grab your copy and you can share with Evis and I both what, what this book meant to you or what your experience was while you read it. So thank you, Evis. It's such an honor. I love you thank very you. much. I have such gratitude. Much, much love, my sister. And as uh, always, from here in the land down under, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And for all you listeners, make sure you subscribe, like, go check out Real Men Real Talk live on Thursday evenings. You can see Evis and his soul brothers on that live show. They are amazing and wonderful. They are just incredible to listen to. You will learn, evolve, and grow by listening and watching to them and learning from them. So please check out Real Men Real Talk live. And to everybody else, Thank you for sharing this space with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you share it with people who you think would touch their souls and their hearts, and especially those pet lovers. Sending all the love in the world to everybody listening. Bye for now, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode.